It's here. Shamrock Creek. We're at home. Uh, we'll head up to the property this weekend, but some exciting news. The Starlink system showed up um, yesterday by FedEx or last night. It wasn't supposed to be here till later this week. It's here, so I figured I'd video unboxing it and um, poking around at it, and then we'll get it installed this weekend. The cargo trailer that we currently camp out of, we modified a few months ago, uh, has plenty of solar power in it. However, we have not mounted the solar panels. We just kind of set them up temporarily. So we'll mount those panels on that trailer first, uh, and then the Starlink will be built into that trailer, um, which will be temporary until the containers are in place where the full system will go, and then we can move the Starlink into there. Now that it's here, let's uh, get started messing with it. What? It's empty. Fascinating how it's all packaged. It looks very uh, beta, <laughs> which is great. I'm okay with that. Um, but it all seems pretty secure in here. Everything looks good. The tape on the box is a little messed up like it had been broke at some point on part of it, but I'm sure that was just the shipping company being stupid. Anyways, inside it looks fine. Uh, everything looks like it's in good shape and not broken. Let's take some parts out and take a look. It's interesting in the package here, they left it all plugged in the way it's supposed to go. Probably because I don't really see any instructions, so it can't be rocket science. Well, it could be, I guess, because it's SpaceX. <laughs> Thanks to the people at work, uh, Brian especially, who was able to give me some answers to questions I had. Since his is already up and working, uh, and being a network engineer, he had a lot of good insight. Once the next phase is up where the cargo containers are in place, and we have some place to actually uh, you know, mount all the solar stuff permanently, we'll put this in there permanently as well. Now this thing's fascinating because it's actually a PoE that powers the dish and the router at the same time. So all of this stuff only has to plug into one outlet, which is, since it's not DC powered yet, which please SpaceX make a DC powered version of this in the future for people who are off grid and already solar. Why invert it when you got to convert it back? This thing is uh, the stand that comes with it. Uh, which is just, you know, as you can see, a basic tripod type thing um, low to the ground. This will work great for what we're doing, I think, because uh, these holes in the corner here, I can just screw those straight down to the, you know, uh, existing tree stump or something and get the thing secured, at least for now. I thought I'd found some directions, but it's really just, you know, product notices, regulatory information, you know, everything that makes, I'm sure, SpaceX's life hard is in this little document here where the government says, here's all the things you can and can't do, and here's all the rules that you're not gonna read anyways. We are getting ready to build the platform for the Starlink dish, dishy as it's called. We do plan on putting a more permanent tall pole uh, concreted into the ground to hold dishy. However, we don't wanna do that until the containers are in because the containers will be housing all the solar equipment uh, and as well as the router and all that stuff. Once that's in place, then we'll move everything into that. We'll mount a more permanent place for Dishy there. Temporarily, since we are staying in the cargo trailer right now that we've outfitted, it's got 300 watts of solar in it. It's got some huge batteries. Uh, I can easily power the Starlink system is 24 by seven, no problem. If you're familiar with elk or if you have elk, you know how like destructive they can be. They don't mean to be, but they just are. Uh, as you've seen on many of our videos, the licking elk destroys cameras and throws them around at things. And we've had stuff stepped on. And so we're gonna get uh, dishy on a plat small platform up off the ground at least. Uh, the elk don't really come up on this landing near the cargo trailer or near this area. Um, never seen them on video since we redid the whole landing uh, a few months back. So they tend to stay down in the lower landing, probably because the salt lick was there, uh, and cut through the, the land in various places. But it should be fine here for now, especially sitting next to the cargo trailer. Uh, and then we'll get it all moved eventually to its permanent home when we get a pole for it and we'll do a follow-up video on that when that happens. So I think for the platform, uh, I'm actually gonna use some of these pallets. We, we got a bunch of really great pallets for free from a company that sells stoves. We were just gonna get rid of them. So I picked a bunch up and we brought them up this time, but there's this little tiny one. It's actually perfect for this. 
So I'm gonna take this over and let's see if Dishy's mount will fit on this, because if it does, I'll just throw some legs on it. We'll be good to go. Look at that. Look at that, it was like it was designed to fit. I'm pretty sure that Elon decided that when he built Dishy's mount, it would fit this pallet size exactly. It must be, I'm convinced. Yeah, that's just fantastic. We'll just uh, put some legs on this thing, get it up off the ground, screw the dish platform right on there and mount, mount us some Dishy. Let's do it. There we go. Instant dishy platform. Build out a scrap lumber, scrap pallet. This is the dishy platform. This is dishy. Human for scale. That's about how big it is. Has a locking mechanism in the base or at the end of the pipe here that locks into any base. Uh, they also sell a pipe adapter that goes from this lock to a standard bolt uh, pipe adapter so you can stick it on any pipe which we will be doing down the road. But for now, we'll just slam Dishy right into this fancy schmancy tripod we built. So there we go, Dishy all mounted up. So I'm gonna run this, move him over to near the cargo trailer, run this cable up through a hole in the floor we have there, seal that shut, keep the bugs out, plug it into the router and we'll fire it up, get it all aimed and Pulling down some internet, see what we get, and uh, that'll be good enough for now. Just taunting uh, Aunt Susan because, uh, you know, we have our Starlink and it's going to be super awesome. And I know she's still waiting for hers. We're just kidding, Susan. We love you. Oh, another thing to note is that Dishy comes attached with 100 feet of cable, which is excellent. Uh, not that I need it right now, but when we do move it, it'll be definitely great to have that and not have to extend it. Uh, it's just uh, a normal RJ45 Ethernet cable that comes out of the dish, but it's attached to the dish as far as I can tell. You can't really remove it. Well, not without tearing it apart, which I'm not going to do. Uh, so I assume you can extend it, but 100 feet is pretty long, so it was nice they did that. The downside is it is not direct burial, so if you plan on burying it, you'll need to stuff it through a conduit. <laughs> Cut that right through the floor, and uh, I'll just use some flex tape, which if you haven't used that stuff, it's amazing. Uh, where I penetrated the floor for some other stuff, I used it as well. So I'll get the cable pulled all the way in, we'll flex tape that down, and then we'll be able to plug it in.
Lovely.